there is absolutely no question that the biggest myth of all guitar pedal myths is the myth about the Klon Kentaur pedal. So the Klon Kentaur pedal is a pedal that was produced pretty much 30 years ago, discontinued production, and now the originals cost $5,000 or something like this, which is absolutely insane. Now, a lot of companies create clones of the Klon Kentaur, and every company is saying that they do the right thing, that their clone sounds exactly like the old ones and whatnot, and we have a bunch of YouTube videos on the comparisons and people arguing in the comments, but that's not what I'm going to talk about today. What I'm going to talk about today is actually a very cheap and easy way how you can mod pretty much any clone of a Klon Kentaur circuit and get very, very close to the old ones. But before we begin, I need to introduce you to these very cool sponsors of this video, and it's the Grunge Dogs. Now, the Grunge Dogs are really cool, and the Hard Rock Dogs are not as cool as the Grunge Dogs. Now, in the presence of Grunge Dogs, I would like to tell you about the Slightly Technical Academy, which you can find at slightlytechnicalacademy.com. It is a place where you can learn stuff like this, especially about the Clunk Cantor, because I'm preparing some really cool things on this exact topic. And there are also some free tone X packs, and there's some knowledge over there which is for free, because you can register for free. So go check that out, visit the Slightly Technical Academy, and smash that like button if you like this content, and subscribe to the channel. Now, that being said, let's move on with the topic. <laughs> Okay, so every company is saying that they would have the magic combination of components that's going to magically create uh, the original Clon Kentaur. Well, let's be perfectly honest. Everything in a circuit matters, especially in an audio circuit. Everything, absolutely everything matters. But let's be also fair. Some components matter more than other components. And a component that is very, very important in a circuit like this, it is the germanium diode. Actually, the germanium diodes used for clipping the signal. Now, germanium diodes are sort of rare today. You can find them, but they're not really popular because germanium is pretty much an obsolete component. So let's take a look at where these these diodes are in the circuit. So here in the circuit you can see the diodes pretty much in the center of the circuit and this is what we would call normally in uh, electronic circuits like hard clipping. So these diodes pretty much clip the signal that comes out of this TL072 op-amp and these diodes are responsible for the compression, the openness, the what all the adjectives that you would hear on YouTube. So what is the problem? If we have these diodes readily available, what is it about them that's so special? Well, the thing is that germanium diodes manufacturing has changed over the years, obviously, so it's very hard to find something that sort of sounds like the old ones, because the new ones, they sound fine, they sound great, but they're a little bit different. Now, why are they different? Well, I just said it, it's because of the manufacturing. The manufacturing process has changed a little bit, essentially making the new diodes better. But what is better about them? So, I'll be quick about this, all right? So, this is the diode, this little guy, all right? This little guy over here, I hope you can see it. This amazing diode. Now, diodes have different characteristics and different models of diodes have different characteristics, obviously, but there is one thing that is very important about them and it's something called the forward voltage drop. Very hard to pronounce. So the voltage drop of the diode, of a germanium diode, is normally like 0 0.2. Everybody knows that, but not all people know that older germanium diodes actually had a bigger voltage drop. So older diodes would have like a voltage drop of like 0.35, in the range of from 0.3 to 0.4, and if you would use the same diode from like maybe 30, 40 years ago, and the one that you use today, it would make the circuit sound quite a bit different, and pretty much that is the magical component that all the companies are talking about. So, we have a problem that we don't have the old diodes. Oh, and by the way, don't buy the ones that you find on eBay because there are some sellers that would sell you like NOS um, diodes that have this voltage drop. I tried buying it and they're lying. Maybe you can find some, but it's very hard to find any. Now, there is a very simple fix. So what I'm going to suggest you do is instead of buying two diodes to put in your clone circuit, you're going to buy four 
You're going to buy four diodes, and instead of using one diode for clipping one side of the signal, you're going to use two of them in series. Because when you connect diodes in series, it will increase their voltage drop, basically increasing it if you take two diodes that are 0 0.2, increasing it to 0 0.4. I also found some diodes that would be like 0 0.18, and when you connect two in series, you would basically get 0 0.36. I would say that it's not extremely important to be very precise uh, about the forward drop, so it's not 0 0.35, it varied in different clone pedals, but it's going to be very interesting what it, it's going to do to the circuit when you connect two of them in series and increase this, this um, voltage drop. It's gonna basically create a new pedal. It's going to sound different, it's going to feel different, and it's the best mod I ever did to my J-Rocket Archer. Okay, so everything you need to do this mod is just a little bit of goodwill and a soldering iron. So what we're going to do is we are gonna mod this J-Rocket Archer with this mod that I just described. <laughs> So here, I hope you can see this, here you can see the diodes. They might look a little bit different, like a different color, but they usually come in a glass package. If you have a different pedal from the J-Rocket Archer, it's probably going to look a little bit different, but the diodes are going to look pretty much the same. One thing to note quickly is that the J-Rocket Archer is, in my opinion, a great pedal and it sounds really good in its original form. Now this mod that I'm doing, I just like it this way and I thought it would be a great idea to show you what I do to the pedal to make it more to my liking and maybe you, just maybe, you are also going to like it. If you don't like this, what I just showed you, be sure to write it down in the comments. Now I'm gonna say it again, everything matters in an audio circuit and these parts, they have tolerances, so they have variation and if you would get two original Clunk and Tar circuits, they would sound different. So we are not trying to sound like the magical clone that pretty much nobody ever tried in person. What I'm offering here is a very, very simple and cheap mod that might just be the thing that you want from this pedal. It's going to pretty much drastically change the sound. I personally like it. I hope that you will like it. Now, I will also say that there were different models of the clone and some of the clone pedals used uh, Schottky diodes. And um, if you have a clone or you prefer the Schottky diodes, just go with that and just disregard this whole video. What can I tell you? Now, before we get into the sound samples, I'd like to kindly remind you about the Slightly Technical Academy. Go there, registration is for free. It's a cool place and a bunch of cool stuff is coming up and smash that like button. It really makes me feel good. Now, to the sound samples. YouTube is just horrible for audio. Before listening to the sound samples, please make sure to disengage the stable volume button so you can hear the samples unprocessed by YouTube. Mm -hmm. 